Welcome to the show where two friends play with each other and explore while role-playing in Dungeons and Dragons. This week, we're doing Testers and Jesters again. This time, Matt's DMing. So, Matt, give me a little summary of the adventure we're about to go on. Don't give anything away. This was a bit of a spontaneous dungeon idea I created. I noticed that we spent a lot of time in the Azure Swamp, very Louisiana vibe, a lot of, you know, swampland, nothing a little too cursed. We have a bit of a huge witch population, but nothing incredibly dark and mysterious going on. So I wanted to have a dungeon that takes place in this place called the Dreadmire, which is off the coast of Respite. Very Dark Souls themed area. With this dungeon slash encounter I'd set up, it's called the Pit. There's a undead spirit. He has control over this magical tomb called the Pit. And the thing with the Pit is it contains horrors from throughout the multiverse. No one knows really where it's come from. Each adventurer slash survivor always tells a different story of what they experience inside the pit. When adventurers come in, they don't come out. So with that being said, there's actually a small little outpost outside called Blightshire. The caretaker, who is the owner of Blightshire, is incredibly mysterious and has ties with the pit and the spirit known as the Lord of the Swamp. This is where we find our character, Aiden. Why don't you just tell a bit about your character? My character's name is Aiden Black Shadow. He was a young kid who grew up in this city called Black Shield, which in our world, there was a cataclysmic event that happened there one day where a demon lord appeared in the sky and exploded. And it caused a massive, almost like a nuclear bomb of necrotic energy that made everyone there either die or get mutated into horrible monsters or it transformed monsters that were already there. And it spread demons everywhere. So this little kid, his family blew up and his dog blew up and he was hit by this explosion and somehow he was still alive. And when he turned around, his family were so exploded that they turned to shadows on the ground like a nuclear bomb. And he realized that his shadow was alive and his dog's shadow was alive. So he began to control them and walk around the city as a shadow sorcerer. He realized one day that the demons thought of him as one of their own and they didn't attack him. So what he started doing was studying wizard stuff so he can capture these demons and control them. So his ultimate goal is to, now that he's all grown up, capture demons who escaped the city, bring them back for money, and eventually open up this orphanage he's making with a bunch of money called the Black Shadow Orphanage. And he wants to one day capture every demon that's ever left the city and every demon in the city and rid the city of demons. And that is his ultimate goal. Wholesome demonologist. Yeah, wholesome demon studier. And he's super badass, and he has black fire for all of his stuff. And his very shadow flies around as a raven. You can control it. And his dog is also... He's a bit of an edgelord. And he's apparently super menacing. <laughs> he's a wholesome edgelord, but he's still an edgelord. Yeah. Aiden, the demon that you're after in the pit, it's known as Vosh Sacrilex. It's a powerful demon. It's been known to rampage throughout the Respite land. It's taken many lives from the City of Light. You've been able to track it down to Blightshire. It has waded through the swamp and into the pit. So my goal is to find this bitch and drop these dimensional shackles I have on him after he is unconscious. Basically trap him in handcuffs he can't break out of. And I can put him in another dimension and keep him as my slave or if I sell him to the people who want him. It depends. If I like him enough, I'll add him to the collection. He can join my Pokemon team. But if I don't like him, if, he, if he's just another duplicate, if I just get another Rattata for the eighth time, then I'm just going to sell. I'm just going to give that to the town. If he's a shiny Rattata, though. Yeah, let's see. If he's, <laughs> let's see how valuable this is. Is it a Charizard? Is it a shiny Charizard? Let's see. All right. It's about noon, and you make your way into Blightshire. You can see a smokestack coming out of the biggest hut. There's some smaller huts. Off to the swamp, you see a boat and a boatman. He's smoking a big pipe. What do you do? Okay, there's a boatman, and he is smoking a pipe. <laughs> I walk up to the boatman, and I say, uh, Hey, boat boatman. <clears throat> Yo. Afternoon morning <laughs> uh i'm i'm new to these parts i'm looking for have you seen i know this is gonna sound a little strange have you seen a uh, a demon around his name is vosh have you seen him he has seen many demons around this parts 
I care not of their names. He'd be a very strong demon, and he would be nearby. Perhaps you will find more information inside the Melted Muscle. Melted Muscle? Yes. It's the biggest hut in Blightshire. I apologize. I do not care much for demons or their kind. I just ferry people to the pit. Yeah, I don't like demons either. Mm. The name's Boatman Joe. Well, I'll remember you, Boatman Joe. Thanks. Thanks for the directions, buddy. We'll hang out sometime. I probably need your help eventually. Perhaps. Are you going to the pit? If he's there, I'll go there. I'm going to check it out. He's probably there. Where else would he be? <laughs> Perhaps. Well, thanks, man. See ya. He's one of those guys that glums on. Like, I start walking away and he's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you go straight into the melted muscle? Oh, yeah. I'm going straight in and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look around. See if there's anybody tough in here. You walk into the tavern. The innkeeper, who is this woman trying to tell, she says, Welcome in, stranger. Welcome to the Melted Muscle. Uh, I'm going to walk up to her and say, Well, howdy there. <laughs> howdy there. I'm not from here. I, no, wait, I am. I am. I am from here. As you can tell by my voice. Clearly, I am from here. Are you trying to find someone to go to the pit with you? Um, do I need to have somebody to go to the pit with me? No, but it's recommended. Usually adventures go in pairs of two and three. Hmm. So, who are these three here, then? Who do you recommend? What do you know around here, lady? Why don't you ask them yourself? I don't ask many questions to the patrons. I just serve them booze. What a boring person you are. <laughs> just ask it around, lady. Just trying to get some help. I walk over to the, yeah, to the, to the woman standing there with the blonde hair. And I say, uh, hi, I'm Aiden. May Alameus guide you, friend. Yes, Alameus. He's a powerful man. Not a man, but a god. But yeah, the god of light's great. He's a great dude. I know a lot of paladins back home who really love the guy. Seems pretty cool. Where are you from, stranger? Uh, I'm from Black Shield. It's uh, a hellhole, literally. Sheer tragedy. What took place there? Oh, yeah. Horrible memories. But uh, it made me who I am, you know? So, uh, so what's the deal with this pit? And I heard you're one of the people who's supposed to come with me. I never said I would come with you, but I can tell you what I know about the pit. There's deep, dark secrets buried underneath there. When adventurers go in, they never come out. Some say that they're fed to this cult it's inside. It's the cult of Zots. Hmm. Zots. Uh, can I make a religion or a history check to see if I can know who they are? Sure, make a religion check. That is a 17. So through your travels, specifically through Rustbite, you've heard of the Cult of Zots, this demon-worshipping cult of werebats. Hmm. They've taken refuge within the area. Oh yeah, those are the werebats, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do not like that. Rumor has it they've formed an alliance with the Lord of the Swamp in order to gain sacrifices from the pit. So this pit has many blo like blood sacrifices in it? Yes. Then yeah, I think I am in the right place. Have you heard anything about a demon named Vrosh? No. I didn't even know na uh, demons had names. Or I care not for them. I destroy them immediately on sight. Well, you know, if you know a demon's name, you might be able to control them. Demons are just like you and me. But, you know, incredibly evil and dangerous. But if you, uh, if you learn how they work, you'll see how powerful they really can be. Only good demon is a dead one. Yeah, that might be true. But, uh... Sometimes it takes a demon to take another demon down. If you find any demons by wandering into the pit, it would be better to take its head than take it home. Well, I'm only here for one right now, so I'll see what happens. Have you ever wanted to go into the pit? Oh, persuasion. All right, that's a 26. 26? Wow. Oh, yeah, 17 plus 9, boyo. She stands up. She gets out of her chair. She looks at you and says, I will help you. Cool. Before you do that, I'm going to go check out the other people and just, you know, ask around. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll let you know. Okay. I'll let you know. You've done great on this interview, and if I don't find anyone... <laughs> if there are demons to be destroyed, then I will gladly take your side. She tells me that her name is Celia, and that she's a war priest of Alimaeus. Okay, I'm going to walk over to the attractive male with the long black hair and the dark beard. I go up to this man. Burly man, what's your name? fuck you say to me small stuff mm, i'm gonna try to intimidate him and try to look him in the eyes all right and say something but let's see what i roll first before i actually say it 
Don't roll a one. Don't roll a one. I just remembered why I named this guy, and you're going to laugh your ass off. I got an 18. So I look him in the eyes. Is it is it successful here? All right. He can tell that you have a bit of a magical aura to you, and so he knows you would be a bit of a challenge, so he kind of backs off a bit. I step up, look him in the eyes, my fiery, fiery black eyes stare him down, and I say to him, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow he is afraid of that because of how terrifying my eyes look. Suppose I should check myself then. Have a seat next to the fire. I sit down and I say, now we're talking. I say, two drinks. Two drinks, lady. She's like, name's Beck, by the way. Pop that drink on down. She visibly spits into your beer. I look at her and I go, you better fix that. You better get me a new drink and not spit in it. Uh, you better hop, skip, and a jump over here and get that right. <laughs> you gotta roll intimidation. I almost wish I made him southern this whole time. <laughs> God, I love it. It's out. I love. I forgot that I could do a southern accent because I'm fucking trash. I say it's a hop, skip, and a jump. You better get me a new drink, or I'll fucking do something I'm not proud of. I got an 18. Yeah, she's visibly stunned, but the dude grabs the beer that she spit in. Goes, I think I'll take this one then, and he just downs the whole thing with her spitting it. I, I like you, man. You're pretty cool. He goes, the name's Bram Ogerarm. And you notice that one of his arms is slightly bigger than the other. I kind of scoot up close and I go, um, so why is that arm so big, huh? Yeah, really. <laughs> is, uh, how you how you using that arm, boy? Is that moving a lot? Is that, is that, is that power <laughs> lifting, boy? <laughs> Are you a bit of a power lifter? Is there a lot going on down there? He, I wink back. <laughs> And Beck, Beck just like awkwardly hands you the beer that she didn't spit in and just walks away because she's just weirded out now. There is some tension in this room. Okay, so um, as we're drinking, so you're a fighter here. What what do you do? What is what is your skill set in the in the pit? Mm. Punch things, punch things good. So you're a fighter or a barbarian or a monk? I'm oh, a fighter. Fighter. He's like, I got these, and he's like, you see, he's got sastus or whatever they're called. The they're like the gloves with like iron on them. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The thing no one can pronounce. Yeah, Cestus or Cestus, 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 whatever. Fist, Cestus. fist punchies. He's got, he's got brass knuckles. Fisticuffs. Yeah. All right. So I say, uh, okay. Well, I'll let you know. They call me Ogre Arm because I got that left hook. Sure, that's why you call you Ogre Arm. Sure. Says he throws punches like an ogre. I'm sure that's not the only thing that's like an ogre. Ooh. I, I then turn around and head over. So it's all ogre now. Yeah. What's up? Prom is love. Prom is life. Prom is life. Exactly. Right. I walk up to the mysterious stranger in the hood. You notice that he is visibly smelly. I look at him and I say, uh, hey, what's your deal? He goes, <clears throat> my name's Moldy Scarecrow. He sl I slowly back up like six feet. Make a nice COVID distance. <laughs> maintain social distance. <laughs> yeah, I maintain social distance, and I look at him and I say, uh, "So, Moldy, uh, what do you do?" I study spores. Spores, huh? Mushrooms, yeah, all kinds. It's. Do you wear any protective apparatus when you do that? Yep. I somehow I don't believe that. You'd have to be me to know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I like to think that he's got like a mushroom grog inside his throat that filters everything. Oh, he's like Ellie from The Last of Us. He's got that immunity going on. I look at him and I say, uh, "So you, so what do you do other with your with your mushrooms?" I can cast spells with them. Okay, mushroom mage. Yep. Well, I'll let you know, buddy. Uh, I walk over to the bartender to back. Well, howdy there. She's like, "What?" I met everybody here. Um, there's that big hunk of man over there, that ogre, ogre arm man. We got us a lady over there. She's a priestess or a war priest of some kind. And then over here we got my, my bro Moldy. He real smelly. He's got asthma. You, you just see him cough in the back of those. <laughs> uh, what are the limits on the amount of contestants that can enter the pit? Usually they only take about two at a time. Ah, uh, well shucks. So how many times do people usually go into this pit? 
Not as often. Uh, we use, usually lose about half a dozen adventurers a month. Wow. How often do people go down? Like, do they come back? I'd say usually about one in ten make it out alive. When they come back, do they go back in? Nope. So it's a one-time deal. No one ever said they couldn't go back in. Usually they just leave and never come back. I could see why. Uh, all right, well, thanks for the information. Which of these three would you like? Do you like mold? Do you like strong men? Or do you like women? You're asking the barkeep. Yeah, I'm asking Becca. What, what, what are you into, girl? Which one? She's like, I don't think that's your business. And then you see uh, Bram in the corner just kind of wink her in the background. And then you see him just make a motion with his ogre arm. He is sending some mixed signals. I look at him to th- and wonder if he's looking at me or at her. I'm going to roll perception. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 19, seeing if he's looking at her or me. What did I get? He's looking at both of you. I look at Beck and I say, um... You and me might need to have a conversation, but uh, I got things to do. See you later. I walk over to the lady and I say, um, so what do you think about Moldy over there? What, that he stinks? And he, he's been around too many mushrooms? I mean, that's pretty obvious, but I mean, like, how good is he in the arena? Has he ever won? None of us have gone to the pet. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So Moldy might just be some Moldy dude. Yep. All right. Well, here's here's what I want to say. Have you ever thought about an internship? What do you mean, internship? Well, you and Brawny Man over there come with me. We go in the pit. We fight a bunch of things. I use my incredibly amazing magical powers. You heal me. He punches them along with the things that I create that will also punch with him. And uh, we all have a good time. What are your powers, by chance? Well... It's complicated, but let's just say I can do a lot. And then I hold up my hand and fire comes out, black fire. That often looks a lot like devil fire. I mean, it's it's not not devil fire. Well, deception. A disadvantage. That is a 12. And you're after a particular demon because you want to capture it. Yes, there's a he's, he has a big bounty on his head. Back in Black Shield, he escaped. And uh, back in Black Shield, we don't always kill the demons because they'll just come back again. So you got to just, sometimes you got to capture them. So you're being truthful. Yeah. Okay, so real persuasion then. He's 16. So she trusts you. She apologizes. She understands that you're not just some kind of crazy necromancer cultist that's going to try to fuck her over. When you kill a demon... They can just come back if they get brought back to this realm or if they have the power to come back to this realm or they find a portal. And demons are vindictive. They like vengeance. So the best thing to do when you're fighting them is to just capture them because if they're trapped, they can't hurt you and you don't know where they are. But if you kill them, they could pop back any moment to fuck with you. You don't want to ever let any of them go because if any of them get away, they'll come back and they'll kill you when you least expect it. Because demons can be patient if they have to be. You make a good point. Do you want to come with me and Mr. Ogre Arm over there? I need all the help I can get in this pit if it's as bad as people say. I guarantee you Boatman Joe can only fit two of us on his boat. All right, I walk over to the other guy. I say, give me a minute. Bram, I like you a lot, man. You're pretty cool. And, you know, I could definitely feel, you know, sort of a sort of a chemistry going on here. But um, you see that blonde woman over there? Yeah. Well, she can heal me. And I know you're a buff, buff man, and you, you can be some good arm candy to come hang out, but um, apparently I can only bring one. I hate to say it, man, but I guess you can't come with me. It hurts. We got some chemistry going. I thought what we had was special. We did have something special, bro, but, but she can heal, you know? I don't even, we and her don't even have any chemistry. She doesn't even really trust me, but... But you, you know, you, you're a strong man, but... He just says, can you just make a promise to me? When you come back and you crawl your way out of the pit, you give me some of that loot, too? You, I, you know what I'll, I'll do? I'll give you a chance to earn some of that loot. Oh. Wink. <laughs> wink, wink. All right. I say, uh, you see what you can do with your back friend over there, and I'll be back. Oh, he's like, oh, I'll keep the bed warm for you. This is so cringy. Yep. I know. See you, buddy. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> We're, we're playing up to the, hey, look. Hey, buddy, I warmed it up for you. I warned them at the beginning of the podcast, okay? Yeah, really. I said two friends playing with each other role-playing. 
I was if I was gonna ever do the intro, I was gonna say two bros chilling online five feet apart. <laughs> yeah, because it's not bros. gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two bros hanging out. Two states away. Yeah, okay. okay. So yeah, I walk over to her. So basically all he said is promise me that you'll bring me back something when you make it out alive. No, yeah, and I said I will, but we're gonna have to, you know, have some fun with this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, so when you walked away from Bram, uh, he tried to smack your ass, but he missed, and he sack tapped you. <laughs> I um, I go, oh, <laughs> save that for later, buddy. Okay, he's embarrassed. <laughs> he's really embarrassed right now. <laughs> I look at her and I say, "Is he embarrassed behind me right now? Has he got some red cheeks going on?" She's like, "Yeah, it, he's, fuck yeah, yeah, he's he's upset with himself." I am clearly a Chad. As you can tell by my physique. <laughs> he then gestures to his physique of 160 pounds. Yeah, really. Super thin and pale. Yeah, really. And he says... Uh, and then versus 200 pound beefcake. <laughs> yeah, he says, look, not everybody has, you know, the goods, but everybody can pretend to have them. And he looks at her and he says, um, all right, well, I, I guess it's you and me. I gave up my chance with beefcake over there, but you know, I need them heels, right? You can heal, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Then you're on my team. As I leave, I say, I'll see you one day. I'll see you, Brom. He's like, bring me back something nice. I got something nice. Ooh. <laughs> I look at her and I go, I do not have anything nice. This is going to be very awkward when this happens, but you know what? We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. I don't know what came over me in that bar. I do not usually have that suave of Devon air, but you know, it's lonely in the dark. They <laughs> <laughs> say it's lonely at the top. Yeah. So I walk there. up to Boatman Joe and I go, Boatman, yeah. Mr. Joe. He's like, you ready to go to the pit? See, you brought another victim with you. Oh, yeah. She's like, let's just get this over with. So just give me a fist bump and we'll go on over. Did she give me a fist bump? She just walks onto the boat. Oh, man. Joe, she left me hanging. Joe, you want to give me a fist bump? Just get your ass on the boat. I look down sad and disappointed. <laughs> defeated. But then, Yeah, I am defeated. Def- but I remember that that guy is back there. Yeah, really. I'll remember him when I'm bleeding to death on the floor. Let's, let's it go. So basically, you navigate through the swamp. You make it to this small little patch of land with, like, the entrance to, like, a tomb. Oh, man, Joe, so he's like, this, this is it. Welcome to the pit. Well, thank you for your kind and generous service, Mr. Boatman Joe. Um, thank you, and um, we'll be back. Or not. I'll be back. Someday. See you, bud. Yep, he leaves. Uh, make a perception check. That is a 11. You look up, and you see on top of the tomb, or the door entrance, you see two werebats staring at you. I do not like that. Oh, look. (laughs) Fresh meat for the pit. I look at them, and I stare at them, and I hold out my... I have have a, a rod in my hand, and I hold it out, and I look at them. I'm not fresh meat. I'm here to win this pit. And then I... I cast Find Familiar. Ooh. I summon my shadow from my back, Peter Pan style. My shadow walks off and turns into a bird. And I say, I'm here to win. Was that an intimidation check or was that? Oh, yeah, that would be that would be intimidation. Because they're they're I'm worried they're going to bite me. So I'm trying to. Oh, yeah. 17 plus 14. That's 31. Intimidation. Uh, they are incredibly frightened of you, and they're, they, like, don't even say anything. They just, they just literally fly away. Yeah, they just peace out. I say, you better run. Yeah, but they, they climb to, like, higher trees, but they still watch you. But they're like, okay, let's leave this dude the fuck alone. So after they leave, I look at Celestia. She looks at you. Aiden, what the hell was that? So I may have not been entirely descriptive of my power. But let's just say I'm incredibly powerful. As you can tell by my aura, I'm very scary. As he presents himself, not almost like 90 pounds wet, just thin, not scary at all. 
look, there's an aura about me. Some stuff happened. It's complicated, but I am incredibly terrifying to everyone. It's kind of a curse, uh, but I'm glad that you, you believe in Alamus because maybe that's why you're not so afraid. She's just like in pure shock. And then you see her just kind of like take the edge off and she's like, we're already at the pit. Whatever. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't matter anymore. Let's just let's just head on in. I look at her before we go in and I go, hey, don't be don't be upset. Don't be stressed. Let's just have a good time. Go team. <laughs> I head on I head on in. <laughs> I feel like I ruined our dynamic pretty early on with the flirting. And now he's like awkwardly trying to figure out how to establish a friendship with his teammate when he should have just had Ogre come with. <laughs> yeah, really. So you walk into this cave and then you just see this huge bottomless pit of blackness. This is it, really? This is what everybody comes here for? Just they literally just throw themselves off a pit together? Throw themselves <laughs> off a cliff? This is it? Really? It would appear to be so. As you're talking, you see a gr- faint green light at the bottom of the pit and it shoots up. And before you is this. Oh, what is that thing? It's like the Grim Reaper from from Soul Eater. Wow. Ah, more participants for the pit. Welcome for this may be your last day. Hi. I'm uh, I'm Aiden. This is my friend Celestia. We are going into the pit. She says, Celia, you must be the Lord of the Swamp. He goes, mm, that I am. What lies before you is a pit of infinite possibilities. And only those that survive take away the treasures buried within. I am willing to take those treasures. Just thought you'd want to know, skeleton man. Or perhaps you will become part of the treasure. I don't know. Anything's possible, man. Mm, we shall see. Are you ready to take part in the pit? Uh, yeah, I definitely am. All right. You see him just slowly fall into the pit until you never see him again. Bye. Suddenly, you feel a low rumble, and you see five large pillars come out of the pit. But it's not, they're not pillars. They're fingers. And this giant skeletal hand grabs you and her and retracts into the pit. Okay, then. Yep. He, um, pretty normal for Aiden, I guess. Celia was about to scream, but then it was too late. You're both wrapped in darkness. Everything goes black. I feel so bad for her. I should have brought the other guy. (laughs) (laughs) I love how, like, you literally convinced her to come with, and she's like, I am not enjoying this. I feel so bad that I made one flirt in the beginning, and it ruined it. Um, normally I would take a break right now, but I want to get this over yeah let's so, do this shit man let's go mm-hmm. in all right you ready yeah because i'm gonna i'm gonna roll even or odd and if it's even it's an encounter if it's odd you get a puzzle dope let's go all right i want to summon some demons and do some fighting we got all that role play out of the way now let's do some fucking killing cool all right now we get to see which room you got so now I get to roll on the new chart Ooh, roll on what you got let's see what we gonna get boy really Huh, that's not what I was expecting. Uh Oh, Oh, that's kind of funny. All right. And you fall, and you fall, and you fall. Have you ever been on a a giant drop at Six Flags where it just picks you up in the air and just drops you? Yeah, that's pretty fucked. That's how you feel right now. So you can hear Celia, and she's screaming, and she's like, I think I'm going to throw up. I think I might have. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Finally, you know when, like, you're falling in your sleep and you wake up and you're, like, your body jumps? Yes. Yes. You're knocked prone and you're in this strange room. Oh, <sighs> holy fuck. Where the fuck are we? Oh. As you survey your surroundings, you notice that what leads further into the pit, it's a mouth with claws. It's carved out of stone. There's these torches of demon fire. Do you think this is a place? I don't think there could be any other place, but as she says that, you see a figure walk out of the mouth. Fuck, what is that? There, that, that is a beefy boy. 
So for those not seeing this, there's a giant beefy demon man in very powerful armor with giant horns. The demon cries out of the vessel, Who dares enter the domain of Varsic Relax? Uh, hi. Aiden here. Uh, I do. I am Aiden Blackshadow, and I'm here to um, arrest that very demon. Stay out of my way, or you will be either banished or killed. Either way, you're going back to hell. So you can leave, and I won't. I won't have. To, I won't deal with you. I'm only here for him. But if you stay in my way, I'm going to take you down. Me and my friend here. You see him hold out his arm and kind of flick it, and you see swords shoot out of the floor. I need you to make a deck save. Okie doke. Nat twenty. Wow. <laughs> wow. How are you anticipating that? <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> he, i'm experienced i know i know demons as soon as he sees a demon he's ready every time you give the demon the speech hey stay out of my way or die they always attack immediately after <laughs> so he just knows he knows the moment <laughs> he knows how many seconds before a demon's like all right it's time to he's, go you're like one one thousand two one thousand <laughs> yeah he's like well, okay as soon as i say that line he's like practice every night in the mirror as soon as i say the line move out of my way or i'm going to be or you're going to die the two beats later, he's going to attack. So I got to jump in that moment. <laughs> okay, so uh, you, instead of taking 12 pierce damage, you take six, and you move out of the way, and you can see this demon knight get visibly angrier <laughs> as you try to have your speed, monologue speech with him. All right, as he burns me, I'm going to give him a little bit of that juice. He needs to make a deck save. Ooh. Okay. Uh, he rolled a 21 on his deck save. Fuck. All right, he takes, uh, I'll do it at the lowest level for now, because I'm testing him. Mm -hmm. He takes, uh, 2d10 fire damage. Halved. Because he saved. Okay. All right, he takes 14 damage. And because he okay. saved, it is half. And you said it was, it was all fire damage? Yeah. It's, um, well, Hellish Rebuke is, yeah, it's fire. And it's 30 foot range? 60. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, the black flames wrap around Vosh, and you see him just shrug it off immediately. Wait, Vosh? Yeah, that's his name. Oh, I thought he was working for Vosh. Nope, that is Vosh. Wait, what? My first enemy is the guy I'm after? Yep, I rolled. I thought he said he was working for No, he said, who dares enter the domain of me, Vosh Sacralex? Yeah. Oh, in this moment, Aiden goes, oh, that's Vosh! I found him. It was so much quicker than I thought. Uh, all right, man. I look at him. Uh, I'd like to size him up. How 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 buff is this dude? Like insight or what? What what would I roll for that? It would be an insight check. All right, that's a eighteen. With an eighteen, uh, you would know that his strength is above twenty. Okay, so he's he's a super strong man, and he seems to have some magics on his side. So I'm gonna go all out on this one. Okay, yeah. you see him snap his finger and you see some werebats fly down okay i might need to adjust my strategy i cast summon greater demon Ooh. at fourth level and i summon a hell wasp so i basically i hold out my rod and i say hasha majasha the hell wasp be born be free and kill him hold back the bats and i cast that as a bonus action using my sorcery points and then I say, Shadow, take him down. And I point at him, and my shadow goes up behind him, and it casts Shocking Grasp on him. And I look to Cell, and I say, uh, You take the bat on the right, giant hornet of death. You take the guy on the left. I got the big bitch. First of all, Celia is fucking scared as shit. The fact that you just summon a giant-ass hell wasp, and then just with everything that's going on, so she's going to try and keep focus. She's scared, but she's listening to you, so she will take the one. Okay, uh, can I roll my uh, my damage for that first that attack and everything? Yeah, for shocking grass. Yeah, so yes. so yeah, so I summon the bee as a bonus action, and then I tell my bird to go as, as a movement, and then I cast shocking grasp, and I rolled a nat twenty. Wow. Okay, so let's double dice. That should be sixty eight, I think. So I did twenty seven lightning damage to his back, and I hold out my rod ready for whatever's next. Okay. Uh, we are going to start initiative. Roll for initiative. Okay, so I got a 16 and the B got a 5. Oh, okay. Wow. So, Celia got a nat 20 on her initiative. Awesome. Let's see. She's going to cast Flame Strike. Awesome. 
It's a dope ass weapon. Divine fire roars from the heavens. A light beam just <laughs> 40 foot high cylinder, 10 foot radius. Wow. Okay. So yeah, she's able to hit him too. So they both need to make a deck save. Okay. And now they have to save. Wow, they both failed. Okay. So the werebat just incinerates into infinity. It just like it collapses itself into light, just explodes. This guy, you can see him that he's on fire, but it's not affecting him. But the holy light is like causing his some of his armor to melt. So he takes 13 damage. And he is fucking pissed. But that's her turn. I walk in. Fucking you, big demon. I'm looking for your boss. Turns out he is that boss. I say, um, I'm going to take you down if you don't get out of my way. He says, I'm going to kick your ass. I make a giant B. It goes, covers the left. She covers the right. I shock him with a bunch of electricity. And then she makes a beam of light so powerful, it disintegrates one of the bats and burns the big boss. All right. I stare, ready for my turn. Okay. It's his turn now. It's Vosh's turn. And you see him just like epic jump, slam attack. I need you both to make a deck save. Oh, shit. She rolled a nat one. I got a... doobly doop a doop boop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop 16. Okay. Uh, you succeed, so you only take uh, 10 bludgeoning damage from the impact, and she takes 40 damage because she crit failed. Wow, she's almost bloody. He just knocked out a third of her HP, like, instantly. Yeah. Uh, it's your turn now, Tony. Okay. Um, there is a big ass demon in armor and a giant sword. He just slammed the ground like Donkey Kong slammed. Okay. Um, fuck. So yeah, I I look at him and I say, um, Max, take him out. And I point at him. And then coming out of my shadow again is a dog made of darkness. And um, he attacks one target until they are dead. So I sick my dog on him, and then it is my turn. Okay, I'm going to cast a very powerful spell. I would like to cast Burning Hands at 5th level. He has to make a dex save. Okay. Let's see, that is a... That's a 23. God damn. He's a big boy. Okay, I rolled 42 damage. You chuck your ball of demon fire at him. You can see it just wash around his body like water. Like, it, it does not affect him. Holy fuck. I used so much power in that. <laughs> All right, I shot fire at him, and it, it's my black fire. It shoots through him like a flamethrower. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm burning him. And then it did nothing. I am a little bit scared, but I can't do anything about it. So I accept whatever he's about to do. Yeah. You just see him just chuckle, just... <laughs> All right, it's your wasp's turn. Oh, yeah, my wasp is going to sting. Okay, so first thing it's going to do, it's going to sting into the bat because it doesn't know what's happening behind it. Um, it gets an 8 plus 7, so a 15. Does that hit? Hits. Okay, it has to make a constitution save. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to feel really bad for this weird bat. Okay, a constitution save was a 15. It takes 9 pierce damage, and then it takes 3 fire damage. Okay, so that's 9 damage tumble. Yeah, 9 damage tumble, and then it does an attack with its sword talons. 15 plus 7. That is. Four. And it does 13 damage. Um, I'm fighting against Vosh with my shadow dog and the girl, the healing girl who's very hurt. The bee is still fighting in the background. It pulls out its stinger, stabs it straight into the werebat, but the werebat doesn't seem all that affected. It then takes its talons that are swords and slices across the thing's chest, damaging it slightly. I end its turn. All right. The werebat, who is barely standing up, barely can move, tries to bite the hell wasp and try to, like, crush its head. Let's see. Does a 15 hit? No. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that thing's on its side. Okay, then. Knees. I just realized why these spells are powerful. Their health is insane. It's not like these things can attack a lot, but they can take a lot of damage. 
That's what summoning is all about. It's about just making walls that get the shit kicked out of them. Basically. Okay, now I get it. All right. Well, yeah, so it's it, it tries to attack him, and it can't do shit. Yep. All right, what now? Yeah, it's back to the top of combat, so... It's our lady. It's going to be... Yep. Lady Luck. Let's see. Um, What she's going to do then is she's going to cast Guiding Bolt on Vosh. All right. And she's going to cast it at fourth level. So it's 46 plus 1d6 for each level of the first. So that's 7d6. And she's got to make an attack while it's... And that hits. And... She calls out to you. She's like, fire doesn't work on him. Yeah, I noticed. It's pretty nuts. Who'd th- who would have thought that a demon from hell would be immune to fire? <laughs> Me, a demon expert who totally knows what he's doing. He takes 27 radiant damage, and he is incredibly fucking pissed off now. And that is her turn. And yes, it is your turn. So this dude is a scurry man. He's the Steven Seagal of demons. Yeah, the Steven Seagal of demons. He's going to fucking, he's going to eat some donuts. <laughs> All right, so fire won't work on him. So what can I do to hurt him? Well, Max, the shadow dog, bites into his arm, and he has to make a strength save. Okay. Which he's probably going to pass. Uh, that is an 18. Yeah, that beats it. So my dog bit him in the arm, is now, like, stuck on it. Uh, it is then my turn. So I am going to get hurt by fire, which is, like, my main thing, which was probably a bad idea. Even though it doesn't really help me all that much, I'm going to cast Vampiric Touch at fourth level. Nice. So I hold out my hand covered in shadow. And I try to pull his life essence away to heal me. Cool. I got 16 or 15. That's, That's a 15. That doesn't hit. Okay. Um, um, so then my bird is going to fly back behind him. And I'm going to do Shocking Grasp again. I guess that cool. Um, 12 plus 9. That's 19. That hits. Yeah, okay. 12 plus 9 is 21. Oh, yeah. yeah, that hits. Okay. 8, 4, and a 3. 15 damage. Yeah, lightning. My dog bit him in the arm. He shook my dog off. I then looked him in the eye and took my shadow hand and tried to rip his soul off, but he dodged out of the way. And then my shadow electrocuted him in the back. Yes. And that is my turn. Okay, it is his turn. And he is going to cleave and hit you and Celia. So I'm going to make two attack rolls. One against you. One. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. That's a 26 against you, Tony. And that's a 16 against her. And let's see. Was she able to tank the hit? Wow, she was able to tank the hit. So she was able to duck out of the way, but you uh, got the brunt of the attack. So let's see how much damage you take. You take 12 slash damage and. 10 fire damage. Um, as he hits me, I cast Hellish Rebuke again. Okay. I also need you to make a constitution save um, to maintain concentration. Well, that's super high. 19 plus 7, so 26. Yeah, you're able to keep your Hell Wasp under control. Cool, Leo. That is his turn. On his turn when he hits me, I cast Hellish Rebuke. So that's 40, 10 damage to him. Uh, he has to make a deck save. Okay. So as he hits me with his blade, I am coated in black flame and... 20 not natural. Yep, okay. 28 damage that does nothing. Well, it's too late now. I'm an idiot. I'm a complete idiot. Aiden panicked. Yeah, scared in the moment. His instincts kicked in and Aiden used the fire that protects him to burn his enemy. But he realized, oh shit, this guy does is immune to fire. Yes. <laughs> All right, so yeah. It is your Hell Wasp turn. All right, he's going to fucking doodly do and schmoodly do. 18 plus 7 and 15 plus 7. Yeah, that hits on the Werebat. And then, let's see, on, and the Werebat has to make a save. Oh, no. It has to make a All con right. save. That's a 9. Oh, it actually failed? Yeah. Wow. I didn't think it could. It would lose below a 12, but okay. 
So, it is poisoned for the next minute. The target is paralyzed. Mm. It must repeat the save on each of its turns. The stinger sticks into it and does 11 damage with piercing and 7 fire damage. It has another attack, but what happens? <laughs> so, here's the sum of the whole fight with the, the wasp versus the werebat. The fucking hell wasp flies up super angry wasp style, stabs the werebat in the chest. But it was ready for it. But it gets clawed in the gut. It's holding a piece of its gut. It's trying to bite a thing. Misses. The thing, Hellas, angrily looks at it in the eyes as it stabs it in the gut, makes it fall over, and then, like, cuts its head off, basically. Absolutely brutal massacre. As it is paralyzed on the ground, unable to move, it sees the wasp stinger just chop its fucking head off. Yeah. Just think of getting stabbed in the gut, you get paralyzed, you fall to the ground, and then you just see this thing just stand over you as it fucking cuts your head off. Yeah, it just stings him in the eyes. Yeah, so where bad priest is bye-bye. The wasp still has a turn, still has one more attack. So cool. it, it turns around in rage and chases down at the dude and gets a fucking 19 plus 7. Wow. Fucking hell wasp for the win. I'm going to I'm going to go back and listen to what his name is and then write it down. <laughs> Cuz I didn't want to just call him Buzzy or Buzz Aldrin or anything. <laughs> I should I should I should have called him like Buzzy, but I I didn't want to make him a joke cuz he is terrifying. Yeah, it is cuz he just fucking killed somebody ruthlessly, brutally murdered. He did 12 um piercing damage to this dude and it's magic okay. piercing. Okay, cool. He is now bloodied. All right, whose turn is it now? Back to the start. It is Celia. <laughs> and she's like, what did I just say about fire doesn't work on him? I didn't think about it. It was an, inf it was an instinct. <laughs> All right. Stop judging Let's me. See. Yeah, really. <laughs> Someone getting insecure. <laughs> and she makes him a mall attack. Makes two mall attacks. So, uh, let's see. She missed the first one with the 15, but she hit the second time with the 23. He takes 10 bludgeoning damage, and he screams out in pain. He's like, <sighs> okay, it is your turn, Tony. Okay. Now that I am 100% sure that he is immune to fire, what is the best way to damage this man? I'm going to cast at the highest level I can. All right. Um, let's roll for this one here. Come on, something good. Please. Come on, roll. Oh my god, okay, real dice. Nat 20. Wow. So 8d6 times 2. And it's not fire. Good. This is where I find out that he's immune to necrotic. Okay, 48 times 2. No, no, it's double dice, remember? Oh yeah, okay. Is If it's 8d6, it's 16d6. A lot of numbers. Okay, I rolled 48 twice, I shit you not. Okay, 96 damage. Um, yeah, okay. So, how do I finish him? You know. So Yeah, how do you finish him off? So, yeah. how much health did he have left, by the way? He had 82 health And left. I did 96? So, I pulled 8... Do I get, do I get like, 96 points, or do I get the 80 he had? Um, you did 96 damage, so you get back 96 health. So, I health. steal extra health off of him that he doesn't have? Base, you stole negative hit points, basically. Oh, wow. okay. So, 96 halved. So, what's half of 96? 48. 48, okay. So, I heal for 48. Wow. This fight didn't happen. Yeah, how do you want to describe defeating Vosh? Okay, so Vosh is my target, right? So, I walked in the room, I said, Hey, you, get out of my way, I'm looking for Vosh. He looked at me and he said, This is Vosh's domain. Anyone who opposes me shall die. And I went, oh, you're Vosh. And then I cast a giant wasp and my dog and my bat. They all went on him, killed his bats, fucking electrocuted him and attacked him. He was immune to fire. So I just look at him with rage as he has just been immune to fire this whole time. And I hold out my hand and the necrotic energy radiates around my hand. And my black fire is not just fire anymore. I stab it into his chest and I drain every bit of health from him. Until he is about to die, I rip every bit of his soul out. And even more than his actual health, I pull 12 extra health out of his body. And as I pull this health out of him, I push it into him slightly and I knock him unconscious. As he goes unconscious, having 
my fire gone through his very veins and soul, come out of his eyes and mouth, and out of every orifice of his body, the fire from me came out. I take out my dimensional shackles, and I throw them on his wrists. All right. Okay, so for the next 30 days, he is trapped in Oh, wow. Cannot get out of the shackles for 30 days. Wow. And then, um, I don't think I have any, any spells to put him in a pocket. I thought that would put him in a pocket, but it doesn't. As I'm holding him with his handcuffs, I look over to my new friend and I say, Hey, so this is the part of the job I needed you for. Can you help me carry this guy? She says, why don't you get your hell wasp to carry it for you? You could just saddle him onto the hell wasp. Good idea. I didn't think about that. The wasp's only going to last for an hour, so if that wasp disappears, you got to carry him, okay? We'll see what happens when we get there. At least help me put him on the wasp. Okay. She agrees, and she helps you lift, lift this unconscious demon knight onto Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> I put him on the wasp, and then I take the manacles that are around him, and I take one handcuff, and I put it on the wasp, and one handcuff, and I put it on him. Cool. So he can't move. His hands are tied behind his back. Gotcha. So I look at her, and I go, all right, now all we have to do is get out of here. Well, there's no way else but through that mouth. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I send my shadow first. Shadow, go. All right, let's head on out. Well, there it is. I had to end it somewhere. It was so long. So Aiden, Celestia, Max the Shadow Dog, Buzz Aldrin the Hell Wasp, and their new prisoner, Vosh Sacrilege, are now trapped in the pit, an enormous dungeon filled with various perils of random rooms. Will they escape next week? Or will they have more than they bargained for? and have tragic consequences put upon them. Find out next time on Testers and Jesters. Thanks for listening. Bye.